welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 633. We have a jam-packed show today, so I'm going to be talking faster than normal. <laughs> Before we get started, I want to remind you that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and we're streaming live on Facebook. I want to remind you that in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. The number to call then, not now, is 614-459-9769. Uh, today's topic is about this uh, Netflix um, documentary, they called it. It was called Root Cause. Uh, it was, uh, it's since been pulled by Netflix, Netflix, but the damage, some of the damage has been done, and so we want to spend today uh, debunking it. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, listen to this, the Netflix trailer. There's no branch of medicine that exists where a dead organ is left in, except in dentistry where a root canal is left in. If you think that you can get away with an infected toxic tooth and not have a systemic consequence, I think you're deluding yourself. Okay, now, without the dramatic music, I want you to remember, we're going to show you or tell you here in a little bit why what these people are saying is totally wrong. This is the day my whole life went to the vast majority of chronic degenerative diseases begin with problems in the mouth. Unfortunately, the uh, dental schools look at the mouth as being a mannequin and that you can do any type of procedure without any direct impact on the rest of the body, but this is the farthest thing from the truth. Eh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Dental schools don't treat the body like a mannequin. They use very strong scientific-based evidence for everything that they teach. I'm really not exaggerating. Panic attacks gave way to chronic fatigue. I was a wreck, a total lost cause. I went searching for answers. What if I could tell you that 98% of women that have breast cancer have a root canal tube on the same side as their breast cancer? Of the people that come to see me with chronic illness, the question is how many of them have a dental cause of their illness? I would say almost all of them. Currently, we have roughly 25 million new root canal procedures being done a year in the United States. One of the greatest public health interventions we could possibly do is to make the root canal procedure something of the past because it does nothing positive for the general health of the body at all. All right, you knew I wouldn't be able to stay silent on that. Oh my goodness, root canals have been around for so long and are so successful. Uh, I didn't even know there could be people out there that thought otherwise. I'm just one guy, and this is my truth. That truth has set me free. So I didn't want my truth to just be a minority of one. Okay, so now our next audio is uh, a YouTube video by Dr. Ali Nassa who is on the faculty of the Harvard School of Dental Medicine in the Department of Restorative and Biomaterial Sciences. He's a microsurgical endodontist and the creator of Real World Endo. Hi folks, this is Ali Nase, and I wanted to make this video because so many of you had contacted me over the past few months and wanted me to share my opinions regarding a recent video documentary questioning the safety of root canal therapy. 
As a root canal specialist and a patient myself, this is obviously an area that I care a lot about and I want to make sure that I address everyone's questions and concerns on this very important topic. After all, I've had a couple of root canals myself and I have even done a bunch of root canal procedures on my parents and close family members throughout the years. So this, as you can imagine, is more than just being an expert and an educator. I care about the health and safety of my own uh, mouth as well as that of my loved ones and family members. So speaking of clinical work, over the past three decades of my clinical and academic career in dentistry, I've completed over 25,000 root canal procedures here in downtown Boston. And I think that I can speak of some level of experience in this area with long-term follow-ups of my own patients. In fact, let me first and foremost share my longest root canal follow-up with you, my own tooth. I had root canal therapy on this tooth in 1990 when I was just a dental student and shortly before I performed my very first root canal procedure myself. The tooth has now been in my mouth serving me for about 30 years. Of course, I do my part of brushing and flossing uh, every day and also stay away from chewing gravel and all kinds of hard stuff, which is an important part of maintaining your healthy dentition beyond a dental chair. Recently, I took a high resolution CBCT of my tooth. By the way, that electronic sound you're hearing, that squeak, uh, during the YouTube video this gentleman has, that's where his picture, his slideshow pictures would change to the next one. So you'll probably hear a few more of those. To check the status of the surrounding bone, and I'm happy to report that everything looks normal after 30 years of service, and I feel completely healthy. So based on my personal experience, root canal therapy works, and that the burden of proof now is really on the shoulder of opponents of this procedure to prove me wrong. In this video, I want to address a couple of main claims that the opponents of this procedure make and see if I can adequately address them for you. There are basically two main claims in this recent film for this procedure that has been made. One claim is that root canal treated tooth is a dead tooth and there is no other place in the body where a dead tissue or an organ is retained. And then the second claim is that root canal therapy is the main cause of heart disease or heart attacks here in America. And you may want to remember those two claims because we're going to do Dr. Kvitko's question of the day in about four minutes and uh, that will probably be part of it. Yeah. Now, I've even thrown in this gem of all time, the 2012 internet meme by Marcola that 97% of terminally ill cancer patients have had root canal therapy. So let's see if we can address that. That meme by Mercola was probably retweeted more frequently than the Mayan apocalypse of 2012. At the end of this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my own two cents about the misunderstandings surrounding this procedure and whether root canal therapy as a procedure is in fact safe or less safe than any other medical procedure such as an appendectomy. So I wanna mention that Dr. Nasa went on to say that at the website realworldendo.com he has a lot of articles and a lot of uh, information to corroborate what he's been saying and what he's about to say that's realworldendo.com r e a l w o r l d e n d o.com realworldendo.com in the middle of each root of your teeth there is a hair thin space called root canal space where pulp tissue resides. Due to decay, cracks, or trauma, regular microbes from the saliva can get into the space and cause inflammation of the pulp tissue and symptoms of a toothache that is associated with what we call root canal infection. At this point, the problem is irreversible and we can generally have two options to address the disease process. You can either remove the whole tooth in order to get rid of the inflamed tissues that are inside the tooth or what we can do is we can remove the inflamed tissues which is the pulp tissue from inside the tooth and the root canal space in order to address the source of the symptoms and this way preserve the tooth organ itself so this procedure by which we do that is called root canal therapy all right that's pretty simple during your root canal procedure we access the root canal space through making a little opening through the top of the tooth remove the content of this root canal space which is the inflamed pulp tissue and then we then disinfect the remaining space to make sure we get rid of the bacteria and fill the space that we have emptied out with a safe and biocompatible filler material. 
After we do that, we seal the space with a filling, the, you know, the, the access preparation on top with a filling or place a crown on top of the tooth, which is a shell that helps hold the tooth together in order to make the remaining tooth structure stronger. An important detail that is often misunderstood by the public is that once the space inside the tooth is contaminated by microbes in the saliva, the main objective is to prevent this contamination from spreading outside the tooth and into the jawbone. So that's essentially the goal of all root canal therapy, confining, removing, and preventing spread of infection to the areas beyond the root and into the bone by sealing the root canal space closed completely with a filling material. And success is then defined as preserving the health of the bone surrounding the root at the root end. So even if there are any remaining microbes sealed inside the tooth after the procedure, this doesn't matter or pose any problems as long as the microbes do not find a path to the outside of the tooth. So in summary, the protection barrier has been moved from this previously the enamel substance of the tooth, enamel tissue, if you will, to the root end as the root canal filling material. That's all that's happened. So you can immediately recognize that the first claim about retaining a dead organ is on shady ground as teeth after root canal therapy still contain live cells from the cementum portion of the root, as well as periodontal ligament cells. Furthermore, normal mature teeth even before they've had root canal therapy are also composed of dead mineral deposits throughout our life. And that's an interesting and important distinction. Every tooth in our mouth has dead and living portions under normal circumstances. And the claim of retaining a dead organ in the body is simply incorrect. Otherwise, a healthy vital tooth contains non-living parts and a root canal treated tooth contains living parts. So a root canal treated tooth is not dead. It only lacks pulpal cells, that's all. When we say it's dead, we're really talking about a lack of painful sensation from it. So how about the second claim that root canal therapy is the cause of heart disease? Well, this of course is the belief of only one doctor shown in this video documentary. Otherwise, Almost every medical practitioner knows that smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, stress, diet, and lifestyles are the scientifically proven factors, and the American Heart Association does not even list root canal therapy as a potential cause. What has been implicated with both gum and root canal disease is a correlation with coronary heart disease, not a causal factor. So one is not causing the other, but both problems coexist at the same time. Basically, root canals cause heart disease the same way that heart disease would cause root canals. You see that? It's just a correlation, not a causation. For example, many smokers and diabetics end up having gum disease and also end up needing root canal therapy for the same dietary and neglect problems that cause diabetes and, and heart disease and, and gum disease and so on. So the fact is that heart disease is present along the side of gum disease and root canal disease is not really a cause and effect. The real cause is the associated common lifestyle and biological factors that often cause both diseases. Okay, so um, today what we're going to do is we're about to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Uh, but before we do, oh, and you know what? Um, let me just give you the phone number right now so you can pre-program it at 614-459-9769. But before we do the contest, we need you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. All right, today we've been debunking the claims made in the Netflix documentary Root Cause. Uh, the two claims that they made, the question is, are these two claims 
uh, true or are they false? All right. One claim is that a root canal tooth is a dead tooth and there's no other place in the body where dead tissue or a dead organ is retained. The other claim they're making is the root canal therapy is the main source of heart disease or heart attacks in America. Are these claims true or are they false? Okay. The winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most interesting dentist. Dr. Kavico, let's go! Yeah! Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have Sarah on the line. Sarah, do you know the answer to the to the question? Hi, how are you? I am good, and you? I'm good. Good. What's the answer the... is false. False. That is a correct answer. Yeah, that's crazy stuff, huh? Oh, yeah. Sarah, have you ever had a root canal? No, I have not. Thank goodness. <laughs> okay, well, I have, and I'm surviving. All right, well, thank you for listening and calling in and stay on the line so we can get your info, okay? Okie dokie. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and listen more to Dr. Ali Nasse, explanation. Many opponents of this procedure quote the work of Dr. Weston Price, calling him the preeminent expert in the field of endodontics. And while Dr. Weston was a great clinician and dietitian, he lived and published his work about root canal therapy in 1920s, exactly 100 years ago. Now, the Roaring Twenties are well known for great jazz music, you know, urban growth and the prohibition. But one thing that they were not really known for was great advances in dentistry and root canal therapy, as you can imagine. In fact, during this time, the high-speed drill was not even invented. Dentists were not wearing gloves, using a rubber dam isolation. Novocaine wasn't even yet invented. And the source of root canal success and failure was still a nebulous concept. It wasn't clear. There was no textbook of root canal therapy published until 1948. So just imagine a dentist trying to do a root canal procedure on a tooth without anesthesia, gloves, or a proper drill or instruments at that time. You can get a better root canal uh, procedure today in the remote areas of the Amazon rainforest that you could get a hundred years ago. So no wonder Dr. Price did not believe in root canal therapy and saw a high failure rate and infection. Frankly, under similar standards, I wouldn't have, I would have probably said the same thing. The fact of the matter is that what we refer to as the average root canal procedure in the 1920s was frankly unrecognizable compared to what modern and highly sophisticated procedure we perform today. I mean, if I quoted a famous surgeon in the 1920s who slammed open heart surgery or even appendectomy as an impossible uh, procedure based on his research at the time, I think we would all find it irrelevant to today's cardiac surgical procedures or abdominal surgical procedures that are done today. Modern technology has clearly addressed many of these shortcomings and the modern root canal procedure is also incomparable to what was happening back then during the time of Dr. Weston Price. 
we have a far better understanding of this procedure and have better techniques in imaging and in disinfection. We've had thousands of studies published since Dr. Weston Price's work, and the procedure today is nothing resembling what he saw during his time. Even though this procedure has a high success rate, it's obviously still a sophisticated and a skill-based procedure, and we have to keep that in mind. Like any surgical procedure, root canal therapy is a service and not a commodity. So expertise and training matters as much, if not more than technological advances. There are plenty of botched dental or medical procedures and root canals are clearly a no exception. As a consumer, we all need to do our research and find qualified practitioners to render our care at an excellent quality of care. When root canal therapy is done, a regimen of recall is recommended after treatment. So your endodontist or your uh, restorative dentist can confirm healing after root canal therapy has been done. And this is often several months after the procedure is done. It's critical that you follow up and return for this examination date so that the efficacy of the treatment can be confirmed. As I mentioned, a small percentage of root canal therapy procedures require a little bit of touch up and follow up after the procedure has been completed in order to eradicate all disease. Finally, the last thing that I wanna say, keep in mind that the alternative to root canal therapy is tooth loss. Every medical procedure has a success and a failure rate. The goal of dentistry is to save our dentition as long as possible. Eventually, like the rest of our body, we all age, unfortunately, and run into problems. So pulling our teeth unnecessarily or prematurely in fear of losing them is like committing suicide prematurely to avoid death. The replacement options for these missing teeth are either implants, bridges, or dentures. Now, a bridge will increase the chances of the abutment teeth requiring root canal therapy, and implants have also similar success rates than root canals and are subject to the same holistic criticism by the same so-called holistic doctors. Essentially, these types of doctors recommend extraction and dentures. Unfortunately, any person wearing dentures can certify that they feel like a pair of shoes in your mouth and they clearly don't do so many wonders for your social life. As far as I'm concerned, losing an organ because of this type of misinformation by these so-called holistic doctors is tantamount to a crime against humanity. The other internet meme about 97% of terminally ill cancer patients which have had root canal therapy was investigated in detail. It turns out that there is really no documented scientific source to this claim, and there is nothing in the literature that says this. This is merely hearsay observation from a German doctor called Joseph Eisel during World War II, who was again using antiquated and anecdotal data on this specific procedure. This is why correlation observations are generally meaningless and scientifically controlled studies are needed to determine cause and effect when it comes to medical procedures. 97% of cancer patients have had a lot of things in common. They've also had fillings, they've used toothpaste, they've, had, they've all eaten a variety of foods. The, the mere correlation can never be a causation. If correlation is enough, holistic doctors should also take note of the 2003 World Health Organization report where people with missing teeth were found to have a shorter lifespan than people that had uh, teeth. And that's pretty interesting. So I don't know how would holistic doctors explain that correlation. At the end, all of us make decisions that best fit our personalities. And as long as we make our decisions in an informed manner, rather than being swayed by charlatans and snake oil salesmen, we can live with our decisions and be happy about it. For me personally, I'm happy that I chose to keep my tooth. This has served me now so well over the past 30 years years. Teeth are organs, and I would have done the same thing if it had been my finger. I think that we need to respect our teeth more and take better care of them. And that's really all that I want to say about that. Okay, remember, you can view more of Dr. Ali Nassau's YouTube videos at realworldendo.com. You can't take me as I am, not just a little bit. Cause
You're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Convicto, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? Okay, our next YouTube video that you're going to hear about this topic is from Dr. Aketha Biss. Have you watched Root Cause, the Netflix documentary? It's about root canals and the potential subsequent illness that um, the person that's running the movie blames on that treatment. So this is my analysis of the documentary to help my patients make decisions that are right for them. So if you're one of the many people that have concerns about your existing root canals or possible root canal treatment, watch this. Yeah, remember this is an actual YouTube video, so she has uh, pictures, slides, just like Dr. Nessa did. And so if you're watching the show on um, thereasonswesmile.com, you'll see the photos that are of the, the, the panels that she's speaking of. The documentary talks about one man's journey to find answers for his illness. He has not responded to any therapy and his symptoms are getting worse. For those of you who know a bit about me and my own journey to find similar answers, you know that I understand his pain and frustration in trying to get help in order to get better and heal. Though my own journey was not as extreme as Ben's, I do understand that there are many people that struggle like he did with an illness that is not being treated properly. They are suffering, not getting any better, or don't have the answers they're looking for from their doctors. So wanting to know why you have an illness and look for ways to heal is completely normal. In the documentary, they make certain claims and refer to studies to support these claims. For example, they refer to a study that showed that 97% of patients with breast cancer had root canals on the same side as the cancer. There's actually no research to support this statement and the statement is irrational. It would kind of be like saying, 97% of patients with breast cancer drink water implying that water caused the cancer. You can't just link these two like that. And there are many other factors involved and a proper scientific study is required in order to determine this type of link. The documentary refers to many studies, so I decided to do some research and read those studies and get the information out to my patients. And here's what I found. There is continued interest in attempting to determine if root canals and other oral disease are factors in systemic diseases. Current research shows that there is strong evidence supporting the association between gum disease and heart disease and a relationship between the health of your mouth and heart attacks. Research also supports a relationship between gum disease and miscarriage and premature births. Scientific studies also support the link between rheumatoid arthritis and decay or cavities. So current research shows evidence that antigen injected into the gums of mice is capable of causing inflammation in the knee joint and antigen administered through the root canal of primates and rabbits caused both local and systemic immunological response. But further animal studies have also shown that antigen introduced in the root canal elicits a strong immune response, stimulating the production of circulating antibodies. In 1976, a study was done that measured the presence of bacteria in the bloodstream after root canal treatment. And the study clearly showed that if proper aseptic technique was used, which included rubber dam, instrumentation that remained within the root canal space, which is a method that is currently used, bacteremia was not produced. By the way, bacteremia is bacteria in the bloodstream. All these studies suggest that the health of your mouth is related to the health of your body. Bacteria in your mouth travel through your bloodstream into the rest of your body. So narrowing it down to root canals only is not taking into account many other factors like gum disease and decay, which play a huge role in overall health and well-being. A reduction in mouth bacteria through proper home care, regular dental cleanings, restoring all broken down and decayed teeth, 
All the procedures that work to eliminate bacteria in your mouth are key to reducing bacteria present in your body. More research is needed to determine if the cause of illness is due to a root canal treatment or not. It is necessary to determine whether a particular root canal therapy has any residual bacteria and inflammation before proceeding to extractions of those teeth. Gathering patient-specific information, including x-rays, scans, and medical history, is critical to determine how to proceed with treatment. Understanding of each particular illness and getting the history of how and when it started is also a big part of the solution. So to find out more about your particular situation, call us to schedule a consultation. And that was Dr. Aketha Biss. Her website is smilesbybiss.com. Her phone number 905-338-6684. Okay, that's all the time we have today. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kvitko. Visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kvitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. And go out and get your root canal and feel safe. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588 or send an email to speaking at TheReasonsWeSmile.com.